Hey guys, I'm here playing Critical Mass. This is a game that just came out on Steam, and it's a, a little bit of a puzzler game, and it's actually kind of hard to explain without actually seeing what's going on. So let's go check out the game, and I'll show you what you can find in this one. So we've got four different game modes. We've got Classic, Survival, Meditation, Rush. Pretty aptly named. We're going to start with Classic here. Three different difficulty levels. I'm more of a casual player right now. This game is pretty hard for me. So, your main objective in this game is essentially to clear all the boards that they give you, and you can see with this Rubik's Cube-like situation we've got going on here, the way you're going to clear it is going to be pretty intuitive. Basically, you have to get four of the same color to be touching, not just three, because, I mean, we do three in two dimensions, now that we're in the third dimension, we got to do four. So basically what I'm just doing here is making sure the colored faces line up, and whenever I can get four of them in a row, I pull the trigger and I get 400 points per block, although that goes up the more you get. Sometimes you can also, uh, you know, get more than four in a row, which is actually kind of the most fun part of the game. You can get kind of a bejeweled situation going on like I just had there. That time I had five. And sometimes you can get cascades of combos coming down, which is pretty excellent. Uh, I'm normally not much of a puzzle guy, and I kind of expected to not really enjoy this game. Uh, which is something I said in the Solar 2 review, too. It's got to be something to do with the title. Like, Critical Mass just doesn't make me think, oh, this game's going to be, like, fucking outstanding and original, but after I sunk about, you know, an hour and a half into this game without even looking up to check the time, I realized that this is actually one hell of a puzzler. Um, there's, there's a lot of things I don't like about the game, or I shouldn't say a lot of things, but there's some things I don't like about the game. For one, uh, the soundtrack just continues to be this kind of house or trance music over and over and over, and I think one of the things a long puzzle game needs to have is a varied and interesting soundtrack, and I don't think it necessarily hits the mark here. But all that kind of falls by the wayside, because I think the gameplay is really strong here. And this is one I would really recommend if you're a fan of puzzle games. Because, you know, there are a lot of good puzzle games that come out uh, pretty frequently, and, you know, this is one of them. Uh, currently going for about $10 on Steam right now. This is going to be a game that non-puzzle fans will enjoy, I think, even though I guess I'm being a little bit hypocritical because I enjoyed it myself. Uh, but I, they'll enjoy it, but maybe not to the tune of $10. Maybe if you're not a puzzle fan, wait for a Steam sale on this one. Suffice to say, this is a good way, uh, you know, if you've got a laptop, to kill some time when, uh, you know, you might be traveling or using the facilities, taking a man to see a horse, if you know what I mean. But that's kind of belittling the game a little bit. It's actually, uh, it deserves a little bit more praise than that. So basically, I'm just going on through with my casual levels here. I'll switch it up after the next level, and we'll kind of show off a little bit more of the game so you can understand ooh, uh, how you can actually fail. I guess I'll explain that right now. So uh, you don't fail uh, like in a bejeweled type of way where uh, you just run out of moves or run out of time. In this, basically, if you watch, the puzzle landscape here just keeps zooming in and zooming in gradually and bit by bit. And eventually that'll get bigger and bigger and bigger, and we'll start to reach something called critical mass. And once we, once we reach critical mass, you'll see like the screen will have red all around its edges. And when that happens, it'll start pulsating a little bit, and if you don't get some combos going before then, then it will explode, or I guess implode. I Yes, not up on my astronomy terms too much, but anyway, my plosions are all messed up. But uh, yeah, it'll, it'll implode, and you'll have to start the level over from the beginning. You can see I also have those uh, three kind of power-ups at the bottom, and I can't remember if I've got any unlocked right now, but in any case, the first one, basically you click that, and then anytime you create a combo, it gives you three times more points for a limited amount of time. And your points affect your ranking in the leaderboards. I'm not sure if you guys saw, but because the game is so new, uh, or, uh, I mean, just because I'm so awesome at it, uh, I'm currently ranked like something like 15th on the casual leaderboards, which is something, uh, obviously, I'll put that on my epitaph when I die if I die. Uh, and the second one is one that basically allows you to slow down time. So that's pretty useful if you're approaching critical mass. But the last one is by far the most important if you're approaching critical mass, because it takes mass back down to zero. So it zooms all the way out on it, and you're basically given a clean slate. It's really useful if you're coming towards the end of a puzzle, and you uh, are starting to reach critical mass, but you won't be able to make it in time. Here's an example of me using the, the slow down time one which is called the Time Warp for some odd reason, when this is certainly not a Time Warp, more like a Time Stall. But in any case, maybe I'm being a little bit pedantic with the name choice here. So after I finish this level, we'll uh, see where I am in the leaderboards to gratify my ego a little bit. <clears throat> I actually lost points on, uh, on my ranking on the first two levels, because apparently I wasn't doing so well, or wasn't doing as well as I had in the past. 
We set this up here, and then three of those will finish that off. Good performance. I've never gotten anything above good performance, because I guess I'm just a total sack of shit. Oh, achievement! I beat my own personal best. Excellent. Number 16. I can live with that. So let's go check out, um, well, my ranking first off. You can see that you get a certain amount of skill points every time you beat a level, and it's based on skill points, not necessarily how many levels you beat or how fast you did it, although I guess that does factor into it to a certain extent. And here's our survival mode. This is something more like, I don't know, Tetris, maybe you could say. Because every time you make a line, more blocks fall, and basically you're just trying to survive for 30 seconds. You're also uh, getting into critical mass situations here too, but I don't think we'll see any of those in these earlier levels. The game actually, it might look really easy right now, but that's only because, well, A, I played the first part of it on uh, the casual setting, and B, uh, basically I have a little bit of experience with it now. The game starts out being really difficult, and especially for me, who isn't really used to thinking in 3D when it comes to puzzles like this, uh, it was really difficult for me when I was starting out. Like, that first level that I basically breezed through at the start of this video, that one actually took me three or four tries just to get through the first time uh, when I was playing it for real. Not that this isn't for real, but in any case. So, one thing I will say is you get good at the game very fast. After, uh, you know, playing it for 15 minutes or so and getting my mind attuned to the way the puzzles work, uh, I was starting to clear stages with some regularity. But it does start out to be very hard. I think probably if you're a... Uh, if you're a hardcore puzzling fan, or you're familiar with games like Tetrisphere or something like that, you're probably going to want to start on something like normal difficulty. Casual is just for trog delights like myself. So again, I'm probably going to back out of survival mode pretty soon, because it doesn't seem like I'm getting into too dangerous of a situation here. And then maybe I'll play a, a level on Expert to see if A, I stack up, and B, uh, if I can get some critical mass actually happening on screen. Because that's a large element of the game, and I haven't had a chance to show it off yet, which is a little disappointing. Uh, the other complaint that I have about the game is that it doesn't really save your progress, so if I play on casual and I get up to stage 9, I can't resume from stage 9 the next time I start playing. I believe I have to start back from stage 1, which, you know, is kind of annoying uh, because I, I played it for, like, like I said, about 90 minutes myself, and I got what I consider to be pretty far, and I wanted to resume from there in the future, but, uh, you know, it's possible I'm just missing something in the feature set anyway. So we'll quit out of this here and let's go check out a level on Expert. I don't think I'm going to do so hot on this one, but we'll see. I'll go with Classic, because that's what I'm most familiar with. I'll we'll go with Expert. And basically what happens on this is just critical mass happens a lot faster. So as we're coming up to the end of the video here, I want to sum up my thoughts so far on critical mass. I was really pleasantly surprised by this one. I don't think it's going to be, uh, I don't think it's a must purchase for everybody. But I think if you're a fan of puzzlers and you found yourself intrigued by this video, this is not going to be $10 poorly spent. You can easily get your money's worth here. I, I could not fathom a situation where you would buy this thinking you were interested and would somehow not get at least a few hours of entertainment out of it. Among my complaints, I don't think it's that polished. Like, graphical style is fine for what the game is. The music is really lacking because there's only this one song and it doesn't really create a fantastic atmosphere. Like, this song isn't memorable. I don't necessarily want to have it stuck in my head. Oh god, we're approaching critical mass really quickly here. But uh, overall, I give this a, a, a recommendation if you're a puzzle fan. Certainly this is uh, not just a generic puzzler like we see so many these days. This has its own character. Oh yeah, and that is, that's critical mass. Uh, and what a, what a great way to end the video. So without further ado, thank you guys for watching this video. And again, critical mass now out on Steam for $8.99 in its first week will be $9.99 after that. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoy the game if you choose to pick it up. See you later.